welcome to the class today. Uh, we will be taking off from where we left yesterday, which is uh, uh, HRCT approach. So today we'll be talking, yesterday we did the normal anatomy, how a normal scan will look like, what are the structures we have to see, what are the planes, what is the lymph nodal anatomy, all of that. Today we'll be uh, talking about one, the general approach to HRCT that we have to have, which is the pattern approach. A bit of it we have learned on the chest x-ray as well, but now we shall be talking about the CT approach. What happened to my screen? And... Uh, then I'll be taking you through ILDs, okay? ILD, mein, uh, it is something which is a very, very difficult thing uh, uh, to report. It is one of the topics where, where, you know, when you are a JR, it seems easy when you are reading or when somebody is teaching. But every scan and every patient is different. And, you know, uh, not always will you see the characteristic pictures that you see in the textbooks and, and what you see in classes. So that's why it is very tricky to report. But overall, uh, this is one of the most important things that we need to know in chest imaging. And these are the common uh, things which are uh, very non-specific, you know, in, in general. So I will try my best to make it a bit easier for you. Okay, so you can see my screen now. Okay, all right. So let's start. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Let's let's start off. So imaging of interstitial lung diseases. First, I'll be talking about uh, the pattern. Okay. So uh, basic approach that all of you need to uh, remember here in thoracic imaging is, is the secondary pulmonary, uh, pulmonary lobule. This is the smallest functional unit for us, you know. So uh, it is not the smallest unit anatomically where we you know that, you know, we have terminal bronchial, we have respiratory bronchial, we have alveolar duct which opens into alveolar sac, right? So that is what what anatomy is but radiologically what is our unit for pathologies and radiology is going to be the secondary pulmonary lobule so what does the pulmonary lobule consist of so what you can see here this is something which is a very nice schematic and something you will see almost everywhere is how a lobule looks like so in the center of the lobule you can see that the artery is entering here. This is what we call as the centrilobular artery because it opens in the center. And this is where you have the respiratory bronchial dividing into the various asinar ducts and the various asini. So in one lobule, we have around 5 to 15 asini, right? On an average, they say 8 asini hote hai in one pulmonary lobule and it measures around 1 to 2 centimeters, okay? So this is what is the lung unit for all diseases for us, okay? So while we have this as the smallest unit and we'll discuss more on this, we also have the interstitium. What the interstitium is, is the connective tissue through which we have the lymphatics and the veins which are coursing. This you need to know. So any interstitial lung disease can have this appearance, right? Either it can involve the lobule, yeah, which is the centrilobular interstitium or the intralobular interstitium, or it can be interlobular interstitium, or it could be along the peribronchovascular bundles. So when we talk about fibrosing diseases, this is what we will discuss. That is there interstitial thickening, which is interlobular? intralobular or is it peribronchovascular? So, this will help you understand that, all right, this is where the interstitium is. So, this is where the fibrosis can happen, okay? So, this is the basic anatomy that you need to know. Now, let's go back into basics, you know, what can happen depending on the anatomy of the pulmonary lobule. So, in the center, we know what all is opening in the center. We have one, the centrilobular artery. And second is the bronchial, right? So we have the respiratory bronchial which enters here. So can I say that anything which is coming by the artery or more importantly the airway will mostly have this sort of a pattern which is called as a centrilobular pattern, okay? So if I have a nodule which is in the center of the pulmonary lobule and it is not touching the pleural surface, this is what we call as a centrilobular nodule, okay? So, the hallmark we will study of a centrilobular nodule is it will never touch the pleural surface. Did you understand? So, can you tell me some DDs, differentials when you see this centrilobular pathology? 
it has to be either arterial or airway. So out of the airway, can you tell me a few differentials of anything which is coming from the airway? Something, somebody who has hypersensitivity, right? Very good. So hypersensitivity pneumonitis, very, very typical, is going to be into the airway. It is going to come along the centrilobular nodules. What else? Yes, respiratory bronchiolitis or as a generalization, can I say any bronchiolitis for that matter? All of the inflammation. Yeah, this is a very big, uh, you know, waste basket sort of a diagnosis that bronchiolitis, anything which is centrilobular is going to be be bronchiolitis right so respiratory bronchiolitis follicular bronchiolitis infectious bronchiolitis right so tb tb can also come as centrilobular nodules so basically anything which is inflammation is going to come via the airway right so this is what you need to remember not aspiration aspiration pneumonitis again aspiration is not in the small airway right it is usually in the big airways right so that is where all right you may have some wall inflammation in aspiration pneumonitis but usually there'll be like a consolidation that presence okay miliary spread again you have to understand that this is not miliary when we say that miliary is hematogenous it is not the centrilobular artery which carries it it's the main pulmonary vessel which uh, carries it and that is what goes into a random fashion okay so this is what one thing you have to remember that even though it is hematogenous miliary is random okay so this is about the center then if i say that the interstitium is in what you will ask me ma'am what is there in the interstitium so that i can know that what will be thickened so what is there in a normal interstitium in a normal interstitium we have the pulmonary veins and we have lymphatics so does that make sense then when either of them are involved i am going to have the septal thickening kaisa septal thickening interlobular isn't it between two lobules so this is interlobular if i have fibrosis within the lobule that is what is called as intra lobular septal thickening okay so this is what we will see in fibrosing lung diseases but when there is interlobular septal thickening then it's either venous pathology when do veins get congested the classical example being pulmonary edema yeah cardiogenic pulmonary edema what happens there is a lot of backflow of blood from the left atrium into the pulmonary veins and that's why the pulmonary veins are thickened and you will have interlobular septal thickening or something to do with lymphatics, pathologies like sarcoid, silicosis, lymphangitic carcinomatosis, which is spreading via lymphatics. All of this is coming to the lymphatics. And that's why lymphatics are thickened. You will have interlobular septal thickening. So did you understand the concept? So on a CT, normally do I see the lobule? No, I don't see. Only when there is a pathology, I will see. So in this case, can you appreciate? This is what is our secondary pulmonary lobule, something of this sort. Yeah. So now can you understand that how? Only when there is interlobular septal thickening, I start to see all of these hexagonal units, which are nothing but my secondary pulmonary lobules. Yeah. Are you guys understanding? So this is the septal thickening that we are appreciating. Yeah. ILD, yeah, so ILD is something that we, will, this is what we are going to learn, but in baby steps, okay, one thing after the other, we are going to add up and then approach ILD because as a diagnosis, I can't diagnose something to be ILD. That's not my job. I have to tell the exact pattern that a consa ILD. Just giving a diagnosis of ILD is as good as not reporting the scan only. So this is what we all have to understand. Okay, so everybody understood the pulmonary lobule. Before I report anything as fibrosis, very, very important, something I touched upon yesterday as well, is to rule out ki koi mimic to nahi hai. And what is the biggest problem fallacy is when you take an expiratory scan. When it's not an inspiratory scan, in an expiratory scan, you will see that overall there is a diffuse gradient. Look at the right lung. This is what an expiratory scan does. Aapko pura ek gradient dikhega and you will feel that, are ye to GG ho hai, isn't it? If I ask you to report, this is what a lot of JRs do, especially junior JRs. Isko likhenge, basal ground glass opacity, query, NSIP pattern. Is this NSIP pattern? No, it is not even ILD. It is an expiratory scan. How do I know it is an expiratory scan? I look at the trachea. Yeah, so we know this. If the posterior wall of the trachea collapses, but not more than 50%. If it collapses more than 50%, then what happens? 
फिर वो ट्रेक्यो मलेशिया हो जाता है इट सो दैट वॉज ट्रेक्यो मलेशिया सो वेन देर इज अ पोस्टीरियर वॉल कोलैप्स एंड दिस इज एक्सपिरेटरी स्कैन आई कॉन्ट रिपोर्ट दिस स्कैन इज आई एल डी यू नो दीज आर बिकॉज ऑफ एक्सपिरेशन वाई आई डू डू एन एक्सपिरेटरी स्कैन ऑन पर्पज इज वेन आई वॉन्ट टू सी एयर ट्रैपिंग सो वेन आई डोंट सी अ ग्रेड एंड एंड आई सी दिस हाइपर लूसन सी देन आई नो दैट इट इज एयर ट्रैपिंग सो दिस ओनली प्लेस वेर यू वुड वॉन्ट टू डू अ पेड एक्सपिरेटरी स्कैन बट दिस इज वन थिंग यू हैव टू मेक श्योर स्पेशली in ild is that it has to be a very very good inspiratory scan again one more pointer for all of you okay what to report then in expiratory scan you can't report this you will just say that there is a basal density which is there which is likely because of the expiratory scan okay that's all okay right what was i saying yeah so whenever you do a uh, uh, this is something which is very important for all of you who are uh, junior residents never report ilds on lung window yeah you have to do an yeah you will have to repeat the scan in inspiratory if the suspicion of fibrosis is high in an expiratory scan but yeah what was i saying you do not do a scan in lung uh, do not report a scan in lung window whenever it's a pulmonary pathology particularly ild you have to do a high resolution ct reconstruction right this is not something that you have to do again that very big misconception you need to acquire a scan in high resolution no now any window you have taken basically any sort of a acquisition you've done you can just do a recon in the lung window right so this will be a high resolution recon that you do the kernels that you use are sharp right so that's what you use you use a sharper window you just have to take a hrct recon so this is something which is very important for all of you don't report ilds in lung window you have to report them in hrct recon it can be done from the console not from your console where you report but from the console where you acquire you can recon construct anything in a sharp that's called a sharp bone window recon which is basically your high resolution recon okay not bone window recall it's called as bony algorithm basically that's what is the higher kernel reconstruction okay and yes finally something that i also talked about yesterday